Welcome to Storytime. Get ready, navigate for quick wisdom of countless stories. Let's dive into the world of knowledge together and explore. The Republic of Wine written by M.O. Yen. Inside the story, cultural eccentricities. The story describes a part of China where eating and drinking customs, particularly with regard to wine and food, take on strange and extreme forms, involving the ingestion of banned foods like human flesh. Allegations and Investigation Mo Yen, the writer and investigator, is dispatched to this region to look into claims of cannibalism. His journey highlights the peculiar customs surrounding food and the region's fascination with it. Ding Goer and Clay Sculptures Ding Goer is a character who possesses a special ability to create lifelike clay sculptures of people. He gets involved in solving the mysteries surrounding wine-related deaths. The events of the narrative depend heavily on his talent. Ironic commentary. The work criticizes corruption, society conventions, and the points where culture and power converge through satire and magical reality. It looks at how these factors interact with the region's seemingly absurd gastronomic customs. Power relations and corruption. The book explores the complex web of power dynamics through symbolic narrative, uncovering elite dishonesty and throwing light on social gaps. Crossed realities. The story explores the nature of truth, desire, and morality while questioning the reader's senses and drawing the divide between reality and fiction. Identity and human nature. Through examining a number of human needs, weaknesses, and societal complexities, characters such as Mo Yen and Ding Goer pose questions about the basic principles of identity and the state of humanity. Themes of Tradition and Modernity The tale explores the conflict between customs and a changing world, bringing light on the conflicts brought on by modern influences and cultural changes. These themes are tradition and modern. Overall, the writer combines surrealism, societal satire, and a thorough examination of the human mind in a narrative with a lot of depth and emotion. Summary The Republic of Wine Mo Yan's strange and comedic novel The Republic of Wine is set in a made-up Chinese province and combines aspects of folklore, magical reality, and social critique. The narrative focuses on two characters, Ding Goer, a young investigator, and Mo Yan, a well-known mystery writer who goes by the same name as the real author. Sent to look into claims of murder in a rural region renowned for its unusual and elaborate eating customs, Mo Yen finds himself in an odd world where politics and food meet. The area is taken over by a strange culture focused on expensive and forbidden delicacies, such as human flesh and an addiction with wine and cuisine. Mo Yen deftly combines social commentary with surrealism throughout the story, exploring topics of authority, corruption, and the distortion of truth through symbolism and symbolism. The narrative develops in a captivating, frequently funny way, rewriting notions of truth and morality while providing an angry overview of modern Chinese culture. In the end, The Republic of Wine is a fascinating and darkly funny story that blurs the distinctions between reality and fiction. In Mo Yan's The Republic of Wine, the real and the magical combine in an exciting and fascinating world. The novel presents a universe where excesses in gastronomic desires reflect broader social and economic problems and moral decline attacking governmental structures and society standards through complex storytelling. The story threads through layers of comedy to unveil an indulgence-driven society in which the lines defining myth from morality and reality blur in a disconcertingly strange way. The novel's central theme is the difficult examination of identity and human nature. Through the eyes of characters such as Mo Yen and Ding Goer, the reader is exposed to a range of human desires, defects, and weaknesses. The unique fusion of social commentary and fantasy functions as a window through which to examine the complications of power relationships, cultural characteristics, and the relationship between modernity and tradition in a world that is changing quickly. In a society where truth itself appears to be an unclear, ever-shifting thing, The Republic of Wine presents a captivating and fascinating novel that challenges perceptions, allowing readers to consider the unclear borders between fact and fantasy, ethics and enjoyment. Chapter 1. The Investigator Arrives An intelligent investigator named Mo Yen visits an odd location in the first chapter. This region has become known for its peculiar eating customs, 
which include consuming foods that most people would never consider. Mo Yan's task is to determine whether everyone in this room is eating food that they shouldn't be, including other people. As soon as he arrives, he notices that everyone has fallen in love with food and expensive refreshments, particularly a certain type of wine. It's not your typical fare. Rather, it's incredibly strange, sometimes even disturbing. He starts researching and asks concerns in an attempt to learn the truth. The Republic of Wine, we get to know Mo Yen, a mission-driven investigator with a keen intellect. This place is well known for its strange dining customs, where inhabitants take pleasure in consuming unusual and occasionally even startling meals. Mo Yen enters this strange society where people are obsessed with food and wine. People are raving about and enjoying these pricey delicacies and unique wines everywhere he turns. Every time they eat, it's like a celebration or a huge thing. It's not just about feeding their hunger. But Mo Yen is here for a very good purpose. There are whispers flying that some people may be consuming foods that they shouldn't be like possibly even other people, instead of simply animals or ordinary food. Although it sounds somewhat crazy, Mo Yan's task is to determine whether these tales are true. He looks into everyone's eating and drinking habits and asks a lot of questions in the beginning of his probe. He observes how much the locals enjoy their meals and wine wherever he visits. However, he also detects an odd and puzzling development taking on beneath the surface. This business is more than just expensive feasts. Mo Yen is keen to reveal its secret. Mo Yen starts to understand that there is a deeper secret hidden beneath her concern with food and wine with every step she takes into this world of delicious luxury. The reader is lured into this strange and fascinating universe as the investigator sets out to solve this mystery, nervous to discover the truth among him on this captivating and occasionally frightening trip. Chapter 2 the obsession with gastronomy. This chapter reveals the degree to which the locals truly enjoy their fine dining and drinking. It is like anything you have ever seen. Every meal they have here is like a big show or celebration, with everything based around what they eat and drink. Mo Yen begins to notice that everyone is talking a lot about this unique wine that they have. It's something people respect and take great pleasure in. It's not just any old drink. It seems as though these strange foods and this specific wine are at the heart of their universe. People are eating these remarkable and on occasion downright strange meals everywhere Mo Yen looks. To some of these may seem a little surprising. However, it's just how the locals love their food. The investigator begins to discover how much they thank their cooking habits and the flashy foods they prepare. For them, Eating is more than simply a means of remaining alive and it is form of expression and a way to celebrate life in a good way. Mo Yen discovers that there's more to this amazing universe of cuisine than just eating meals as he explores it more. There's an almost uncontrollable passion and obsession. There's also a feeling of secret lying beneath the surface of this expensive, even dramatic celebration of food, which Mo Yen is trying to solve. Mo Yen comes across certain foods in his investigation that can come across as odd or even shocking to other people. But for the locals, these unusual dinners are all about celebrating their customs and culture. They are proud of their food history and value every facet of their food culture with respect and pride. Mo Yen detects a hidden quality beneath this showy exhibition of cooking arts, a mystery that lies beneath this intense concentration with wine and food. Interest grows in the investigator, who is ready to delve deeper and reveal the reality that lies behind this fascinating realm of culinary excess. It seems as though there is a tale hiding beneath the beautiful meals and complex displays, one that Mo Yen is determined to unravel. Chapter 3 Ding Goer's Peculiar Talent In this chapter, Ding Goer is introduced. He stands out due to an especially special skill. Ding Goer shows an amazing skill for creating lifelike clay sculptures. What he might accomplish with clay is quite amazing. It seems almost magical. Ding Goer's ability plays an important part in the narrative. He is more than just a painter. Mo Yan's investigation becomes linked with his talent. Ding Goer's odd gift begins to help Mo Yan figure out the truth behind the odd happenings, as he digs more into the enigmas of this place and its strange eating habits. In the community, Ding Goer's outstanding ability is discussed with awe and admiration. In addition, 
Ding Goer's skill becomes more and more remarkable as Mo Yan's study goes on, showing that his ability may hold some answers to the details that lie behind the strange realm of cooking attraction. Ding Goer's amazing talent starts to blend in with the strange things of the probe as the story progresses. Intrigued by Ding Goer's outstanding abilities, Mo Yen begins to make connections between the mysteries surrounding the region's unusual culinary behaviors and these lifelike clay creations. It seems as though Ding Goer sculptures, which serve as silent witnesses to the strange happenings, may hold some secrets or hidden meanings. In addition to his extraordinary talent, Ding Goer is highly respected by the locals for his humble personality and keen sense of observation. Mo Yen becomes aware of Ding Goer as more than just a gifted sculptor. He plays a significant role in the mystery that is developing, and his creations may hold the key to revealing the dark mysteries that surround the world of delicious food. The reader is left wondering what part this odd gift might play in solving the mysteries of this strange location when the paths of the police officer and Ding Goer connect. Chapter 4, Uncovering Mysteries This chapter sees Mo Yan's study take an additional turn as he explores the strange happenings related to the area's unique food customs. He begins to piece together the connection between the mysterious events and Ding Goer's extraordinary talent, feeling that these lifelike artworks are more complex than they first appear. Mo Yan starts to find hints and clues that point to a secret side to the rich wine culture and rich dining as he chats with more people and explores the area more. There are rumors of weird happenings and odd deaths connected to drinking this particular wine, which suggests a more complicated and dark world exists beneath the surface. Mo Yan's inquiry begins to reveal a deeper significance behind Ding Goer's sculptures, which at first glance seemed like wonderful pieces of art. There's an increasing amount of investment that these clay creations could contain messages or secrets pertaining to the mysteries surrounding the area. Mo Yen grows more and more fascinated by the possible link between Ding Goer's skill and the unsettling reality that lies beneath this gastronomy-obsessed society. As Mo Yen gets closer to solving the hidden mysteries at the center of this strange realm, the chapter develops with an air of mystery and developing suspense. Mo Yen goes into the shadowy corners of this apparently bright society, uncovering layers of dishonesty and unspoken realities. A more dark and strange image begins to take shape as he collects more data and puts together pieces of knowledge from the locals. Mo Yen feels uneasy because she believes that beneath the surface of the rich dining and wine obsession, there may be darker activities going on. The strange demises and frightening events linked to the special wine's consumption develop into more than just gossip. Mo Yen begins to see a trend, a string of events that point to a disturbing link between these strange happenings and the wealthy culinary customs. Once praised for their creative quality, Ding Goer sculptures today appear to be possible witnesses to the evil side of mankind. In an attempt to solve the puzzles and reveal the disturbing realities that lie beyond the surface of this food fixing, Mo Yen becomes fixated on reading the hidden meanings contained in these clay artworks. The chapter ends with a sense of pressure, indicating that Ding Goer's talent may be crucial to discovering the mysteries that have been buried. Chapter 5. Satirical Commentary Unfolds This chapter marks cutting of M.O. Yan's narrative as he uses satire to peel back the layers of this odd universe. The detective begins to adopt a more critical viewpoint, making delicate notes about the power structures, cultural norms, and strange concentration of excesses in food and culture in the area. The reader is given an insight into the comical and exaggerated aspects of the cooking behaviors through Mo Yan's observations and interactions. The narrative has a critical undertone that draws attention to how the rich dining reflects society corruption and ethics that have been twisted. Mo Yan's journey into this realm of food excess provides humorous insights into the extent people will go to in order to enjoy wine and food. It's more than just having a nice dinner. It's a critique of the excesses and superficiality beneath this showy display of cooking talent, almost like a competition or status symbol. The chapter uses satire as a method to highlight the contradictions and oddities in this culture, and it develops with a mixture of comedy and evaluation. Mo Yan's narrative adopts a more funny tone, offering an objective assessment of the social mores and traditions that create the area's foodie concern. Chapter 5 sheds light on the complex layers of social criticism that lie beneath the opulent cuisine of the world through M.O. Yan's perceptive observations and perceptive storytelling. 
a humorous commentary on the region's excessive customs and practically dramatic cooking follows is provided by the investigator's gaze. In addition to being amusing, this arrogant tone challenges readers to consider the more profound effects of a culture in which culinary excess is seen as a status symbol and a reflection of social ideals. As the chapter goes on, Mo Yan's sarcastic viewpoint gives the narrative more depth and creates a vivid picture that critically examines the excesses and social facades present in this realm of foodie extravagance while also fusing comedy. Chapter 6, The Blurred Line of Reality. This chapter continues Mo Yan's research into the amazing details of this singular world, where the lines separating the imaginary from the real start to blur. The story takes an unexpected turn that draws readers into a world where appears can be dishonest. Mo Yen comes across situations that make him question what is and isn't normal as he continues to solve the puzzles surrounding the area's attachment with food. A feeling of ambiguity and interest is created when odd happenings and errors begin to appear. The investigator sees events where reality seems to blend with the strange and challenges traditional explanations. Some of the interactions have a fantastic feel to them, making Mo Yen wonder if what he sees and feels in the world of fantasy and reality is really real. The story tantalizingly blurs the line between truth and fantasy as the chapter goes on, drawing the reader and Mo Yen into a world where the limits of what is possible disappear and the ordinary becomes extraordinary. The feeling of mystery grows stronger, suggesting a considerably more complex and complex reality than at first appears. The intriguing ambiguity between truth and fiction in the narrative landscape is examined in greater detail in Chapter 6. The narrative celebrates a sense of wonder and uncertainty as Mo Yen makes her way through this intriguing realm, offering scenarios that defy accepted notions of reality. The investigator experiences moments that seem bizarre, where the fabric of the everyday world seems to dissolve, and there's an air of surprise about it. This foggy line between the material and the invisible gives a sense of mystery, challenging the readers and the protagonists' ideas and encouraging acceptance of the strange. The chapter develops in a dreamlike manner, hinting at the limits of what is possible and inspiring reflection on the nature of truth and the intriguing relationship among reality and imagination in this mysterious space. Chapter 7, The Impact of Power. The story changes gears in this chapter to examine the impact of power relations in relation to the area's food allure. Mo Yen explores in more detail the social structures and norms that influence how people connect with wine, food, and one another. The underlying meaning of authority and power related to the showy food uses become apparent to the investigator. The way that some people control the culinary customs and form the rules and tastes of the community appears rather clearly. According to Mo Yen, those in positions of power have a big say in what is considered acceptable or even praised in the culinary world. It seems as though the region's political and social structures appear in this concern with cuisine, which goes beyond simple eating habits. Readers are given insight into how power systems affect people's lives and the food sector through the story. Mo Yan's insights show the ways in which societal power relations are entwined with the conspicuous eating suggesting a more profound relationship between authority, influence, and regional cuisine. As the chapter goes on, it examines the complex relationship between power and the culinary culture, encouraging thought about the different kinds of control within this unique. Mo Yan's research shows how authority impacts social norms and gastronomic tastes in addition to gradually affecting how individuals view food and wine. There is a strong feeling of hierarchy and power relationships at play, with people in positions of control determining cultural norms while deciding what is right and wrong. The story clearly shows how the interest in food isn't only about tradition or taste, but rather reflects the complex relationships among social structures, authority, and cultural methods. The chapter encourages reflection on the complexity of power dynamics and their extensive effect on the structure of this amazing culinary society as Mo Yen talks about this landscape of power. Chapter 8 identity and human nature. This chapter investigates the complexity of behavior and identity against the backdrop of the local food culture. As a result of his research, Mo Yen considers the ways in which people's identities connect with their attitudes towards wine, food, and traditions. Mo Yen starts to understand how closely the community's food habits and its members' identities connect when he connects with them. 
their eating, cooking, and celebration of food become deeply rooted in their sense of self. It's a reflection of their cultural identity and background and goes beyond food. Mo Yan's research goes more into the complex connection that exists between human nature and cultural identity in the context of cuisine. As he delves deeper into the community's culinary customs, he observes how these behaviors form the basis of both individual and group identity in addition to being a means of livelihood. A person's ideals, background, and basic nature are reflected in the way they cook, eat, and love their meals. By using this lens, the story provides a profound meditation on the generality of human connection through food, underlining the ways in which our cultural background and the customs around meals impact not only who we are as individuals, but also how we experience the world. Readers are encouraged to consider the complex relationships between cultures, practices, individual identities, and the core of human character, clearly showing the ways in which food binds us together in a web of shared emotions and basic human nature. Chapter 9. Clash of Tradition and Modernity This chapter's research by Mo Yen shows the tensions and conflicts that result from the combination of modern influences and traditional food methods. The story explores the ways in which the ancient culinary customs of the area interact with the pressures of technology. Mo Yen observes an argument between maintaining customs and changing with the times as he examines the food customs. Discord occurs when the community's fundamental customs and follows are replaced by the pull of technology. The researcher sees how the younger generation approaches the beloved culinary traditions in a different way than their grandparents, inspired by modern concepts and outside trends. Their shifting attitudes and tastes are a reflection of the continuous struggle to embrace new ideas and traditions while keeping to the past. Mo Yan's research sheds light on the challenges and complexities the community faces as they attempt to strike a balance between maintaining their rich history and embracing change. It invites contemplation on the ongoing conflict between keeping tradition and welcoming change in the ever-changing field of food and drink. Mo Yan observes how circumstances are shifting in the midst of these disputes, where customs are seen as living things that are shifting to adapt to the times rather than as static relics. Maintaining elders' customs while welcoming modern advances requires careful concessions, resulting in a setting where tradition and development converge. The chapter reads as a thoughtful investigation that challenges readers to think about how to succeed in cultural evolution while preserving the essence of tradition. It also provides insights into the complex relationships that exist between the past and the pace of progress in the field of food preparation customs. Chapter 10 the culmination of the investigation. Mo Yan's research climaxes in this important chapter as he puts the many hints and conclusions from his exploration together. As the detective gets closer to the end of his mission to solve the questions surrounding the strange food world in the area, the story develops with a sense of tension. The secret behind the mysterious events starts to come to light as Mo Yan makes the connections and weaves together the different pieces of proof the chapter builds to a crescendo of reports each exposing some aspect of this delicious society's rich web of customs, secrets, and difficult reality. The investigator's steadfast search for the truth concludes in a revelation when the puzzles that had escaped his comprehension start to fall into place. In this final chapter, Ding Goer's exceptional skill, the conflict between tradition and upgrades, and the effect of the balance of power all come together to give a complete picture of the many layers embroidered into the region's food fabric. By means of thorough investigation and careful reflection, Mo Yen gets closer to solving the unexplained happenings that have beset the town. This chapter represents a turning point in the story because it promises to break down the complex web of mystery that has been maintained throughout and shows how the hunt will be resolved. As the story comes to an end, Mo Yen is about to reveal the mysteries that have shaped this strange universe, and the atmosphere is charged with expectation. The detective's continuous work and smart deductions portend a conclusion that will not only divulge the details concealed in the culinary puzzles, but also offer a deep comprehension of the complex relationships among customs, cultural norms, and the basic elements of human nature. The scene is set for the revelation that will lift the veil on the secret and put Mo Yan's amazing adventure through the secret and fascinating world of culinary intrigue. He learnings, the Republic of Wine, skillfully combines profound ideas with a weaving of fascinating themes.
Essentially, the narrative offers a challenging examination of the complicated relationship among culture, identity, and human nature. The story explores the tensions between tradition and development under the medium of food, highlighting the conflict between upholding long-standing traditions and welcoming new influences. It provides an opportunity for reflection on the changing character of cultural history and the difficulties of managing social change while preserving the foundation of tradition. In addition, the story offers a biting indictment of power structures and society traditions. It reveals the relationship between power, influence, and culinary traditions, as well as the impact that governments have over cultural methods. The narrative invites reflection on the more profound effects of the roles of power in societies and how these forces influence the formation of cultural norms and values. In the end, The Republic of Wine presents a complex picture of the linked threads of culture, power, and human conduct, pushing readers to consider the complexities of tradition, identity, and the constantly shifting terrain of societal change.